How's it going, everyone? Today, we're going to be going over a very exciting March release of Home Assistant. In this release, there's tons of new features. We'll go through some of the biggest changes here, but don't forget to go to the release notes, go over all the changes from all of the contributors that is linked down below in the description. In this release, there are a ton of new changes. Stuff like media browser and media integrations got huge uplifts. There's also some UI tweaks and some other stuff that we'll go through. The first feature we're gonna be going through is the play media action. Really incredible addition to the automation editor is the ability to play media very easily from the media browser. So now all you have to do in order to play your camera streams or your lovely dashboards or radio on any device automatically is to utilize this new play media action. Very easy, and we cover it in a different video that I'll link up in the top right, but I'll also link it down in the description below. So make sure to check that out if you're interested. The next few features are actually media source additions. Really cool way to play any type of media. Now the first one we have is actually text to speech. You're gonna be able to play any text to speech using the Media Play browser. And this can be from Google Translate, this can be from Nabucasa, this can be from any text-to-speech integration that has a media browser set up. Now, this is gonna be super easy to automate text-to-speech as well as anything else. The second one is the radio browser. You can now browse radios from any country, anywhere, popular, category, or all of there. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of radio stations are all right there. Thank you, Frank. For this one, this is a really cool addition. And then the last source that was added, thank you, Paulus, was the ability to cast any Lovelace dashboard from the media browser. So you will recall that you could do casting of your Lovelace dashboard before, but now, now it's a lot easier. Now all you have to do is utilize that same automation play action and you can do that very easy with your Lovelace dashboards. Now it can be any cast device and you can play that right through the media browser. Onto the next feature, we have media management. And before you had to fire up Samba Share, connect your PC and utilize that in order to transfer media like images and music onto your home assistant local media. Well, that's no more. Now from any device, you can go to the media browser, click the management button up in the top right, click on add media and add any media from your device, whether that's your phone or your computer or anything else. You can also delete media very, very easily. So if you add something and now you want to remove it, or you no longer need that, you can easily select it and click delete. This feature is amazing for being able to customize your local media browser in order to put whatever you want on there with very ease of use. No longer do you have to fire up Samba Share in order to do that. Now, the next thing is not really a feature, but more of an announcement. We are coming out with the Home Assistant newsletter. Very exciting stuff. Now, we know a lot of you may not read the blog post or may not want to keep up to date with our Twitter or Discord. So now, you can get it directly to your inbox. Very easy, very fast, and all it's going to be is a quick digest of what's going on in Home Assistant for the month. Now we're going to release this newsletter every single month on the date of release. And you'll be able to go through that, see the highlights of the release, and even go directly to the release notes from your email. It'll also contain community highlights and anything else happening in the community or home assistant in general. So be sure to sign up for that. The link will be down in the description below if you want to sign up. Click that and sign up today. Now let's get back to the next feature. This feature is really cool for the automation editor. This allows you to see whenever you trigger your action. Now let's say that you're creating a new automation and you want to make sure you have the right trigger selected for this automation. Before you would have to create the automation and then test it using the trigger device. But now you can actually test it while you're creating the automation. Let's say that I want to create an automation to get triggered on a button press of one of my physical buttons. Now I can easily do that now by going and 
clicking on the automation triggers, selecting the device that I want to be triggered and what action is going to be placed, and then actually clicking the button in real life. And I will see this triggered text that's going to show up blue first. And if I trigger it again, it'll show up orange. And it'll iterate back and forth between blue and orange every time that I trigger it, letting me know that I'm doing the right thing by creating this automation. Very cool feature for the automation editor. It's going to be really nice benefit when creating those different automations. Now on to the last main feature that we're going to be going through, which is the entity auto completion. This is for all you YAML folks out there that are using YAML today in your editors. You will now find that whenever you start typing in your entities, it's going to auto complete from your home assistant instance, making it super easy to go ahead and put in whatever sensor, whatever entity that you need at that time. No longer do you have to remember exactly what the entity name is and entity ID is. This will actually auto complete, but also it'll even tell you the state that the current entity is in. That's crazy. Awesome feature, incredible addition to our YAML editors. Now that we've finished most of the big ones, let's go through and rapid fire a few really quickly. First one on the block, ESP Home added support for locks. So now you can use ESP Home to create your own locks. We also added volume control to the media browser. Very easily control the volume on your cast device, your Google Home, whatever device that you're utilizing to cast media to. We also added a new date picker in the UI. So now it's a pretty date picker. Thank you, Brom, for adding this into our UI. We also got Octo Print updates. You can now tell your printer to resume, pause, or stop a print directly from Home Assistant. And that can be automated. You can even start using this for automation based on your camera. We also got the pure energy addition to the Home Assistant, new integration to track your energy. We also got a really cool integration from Wiz. Really nice feature set, really nice integration from B Draco, which is an awesome value add to our integration list. That is all for today. Now that was not even close to all the release notes that are in here. We have a ton of contributors that are contributing to Home Assistant every single release, and it's amazing. Check out all of them and check out all of the release notes in the link below and have a good Home Assistant release and a good week. Thank you.